it's day three of the CrossFit Games or the first day of the individual competition and I'm about to head down to the Alliant Energy Centre. Today I'm going to be following the journeys of like some of the athletes that I'm super interested in. I know for a while that CrossFit will cover whoever is leading the pack in each individual event so they've got that covered. I'm going to focus on the people that I really like as athletes. I'm going to take you around with me and I'll also show you some little things that I do throughout the day. I'm staying in a hotel about a mile away from the venue and I hired a bike yesterday and I'm going to cycle for the rest of the weekend which I'm really happy about because I'm sick of getting in Ubers. I am feeling slightly more anxious today because I know there's going to be a lot more people and I do struggle with crowds but I'm sure it'll be fine. Right come with me and let's go to the CrossFit Games. Oh my god I'm freaking out. <laughs> Dave Castro just messaged me on Instagram offering me a media pass. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Obviously I've said yes. <laughs> this content might get slightly better. I'm really happy. <laughs> I was happy with my seat right at the back and I can still go and use it if I need to, but that's <laughs> what? <laughs> I must have made some decent content over the last few days. This solves all of my problems with seating. I was really stressing about having to get to that park bit and there's been loads more people there today and not being able to get decent footage. This literally solves it all. And hopefully I'll be able to vanish off into the middle of nowhere. And <laughs> there's places that I can go if I'm panicking as well. Like it solves a lot more problems than just me being able to get good footage. I am very nervous now, but I'm also feeling a lot less anxious because I don't need to worry about where I'm trying to go all day. Okay, so I officially have a media pass and I'm heading over to Crown Park for the first event, which is the bikes, which is exciting. You have no idea how hot it was on this cycle, honestly. I was burning alive. I thought that I had Fact 50 on and it would be totally okay, but my sunburn is absolutely hilarious. So Laura Horvath started off leading the race and we know from previous events she's pretty damn good on a bike, but I think potentially she underestimated how long this workout really was and that didn't last very long. She probably led for like the first quarter of the workout and then it started to tail off into, she was still within the top 10 I think, but struggled a little bit. Katrin surprisingly was right at the front and she was grinning the entire time. She was so thrilled to be there. She looked like she was having a lot of fun. This is different to some of the like cycle cross events that they had in the past. There wasn't a huge amount of obstacles. There was only like one style that they needed to go over. It was mostly like a long distance bike ride. And previously like the cycle cross, that was a much shorter event. So it's a definitely a different test. And I think it really exposed a few people that maybe aren't as comfortable on a bike, particularly in the men's field, which I'll get to a little bit later. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Our athletes kicking off the day with a little bike ride, and they are off. Thank you. 
Yonikoski and Jeffrey Adler were definitely ones to watch in this one. What was really interesting is that Justin Madeira started off quite far at the front and then I believe he had two accidents. I know later on he definitely had big scratches on his chest. And then after the accidents that happened quite early on in the event, he did really struggle. One thing I want to note here is Pat Vellner, if you look at his feet, they're going super duper fast in comparison to all the other athletes. That means that he needs to change up his gear. I don't really know why he hasn't realized that. Maybe he hasn't had a lot of coaching around cycling. Last time I just assumed it was because his bike had broken, but maybe this is the reason why he ends up with such low finishes when there is a bike involved. Maybe he just isn't that familiar with cycling or using a bike, mountain bike, road bike, anything. Because on a road bike, you do tend to have a higher cadence that is slightly better. But on a mountain bike, especially if you're trying to like push to go faster downhill, well, I mean, on a road bike, you do the same. You need to change up your gear so that you can push harder to slow your feet down, basically you don't want to be cycling that fast with your legs when you're trying to speed up because it's clear that he's got no resistance there he's not pushing against anything so he needs to change his gear up so he can push more he did finish with a better result than he has in previous years though he ended up with a 27th rather than like a 37th Chandler Smith was doing pretty well I noticed he was pushing quite hard towards the end of the race to try and get back into the front and then right at the end watching all of them fly past i could barely get any footage at all because they were going so quickly it was amazing and uh Yonikoski, obviously he's the one that won he like flew past and jeffrey adler and a couple of the others were chasing them down roman karenikov was up in the front as well Me and the guy on the door are like best mates at this point. Every single day at like 10 o'clock I come out because I need some shade because I can't be in the sun for that long. I'm far too English. <laughs> I still can't believe I've got a press pass. I haven't managed to use any like press pass privileges yet because I, the bike one, everybody was just everywhere. It was like a free for all. We didn't really have any special space to go to. But in a minute, I'm gonna go into the press area and see what that's like. <laughs> because the next outdoor event is happening. That is the pig chipper it's called. I think the people in the men's that I'm gonna follow is gonna be like Pat Vellner, Fakowski, maybe Chandler Smith because I really like him. And like BKG, cause he's European as well. He's just really good. I've got a soft spot for everyone from Iceland, I think. For the girls, obviously Annie, Laura, Gabby. If you're here, who's winning on the live stream, so I can just follow the people whose story I'm interested in. So Laura, Katrin, Annie and Gabby were all pretty much near the top in that last event. They did really well. Annie did not make the time cap so that she could like sprint the final lap. So she missed out on that, but she was still within the top group. Katrin was off to a surprisingly good start. She is doing really well. And I think a lot of people are kind of predicting she's gonna do an Annie and end up back on the podium having seen her first performance and the amount that she was just grinning her face off as well she was smiling the whole time maybe that is on the cards Laura led early actually but she then kind of lost it Emma Lawson looked really strong at the front for most of the time I think she must have overtaken like halfway through and then just went full send towards the end she was she was very good on that bike Jonakowski won the men's he crushed it and I, did, I don't think I managed to get him at the end because he was so fast. The surprising thing about the men's is not that Patrick Vellner is probably in 30th place again and has a hole to dig himself out of like he does every single year. But the surprise was that Justin Medeiros was like two spots behind him. He was there for quite a long time, like a couple of laps back. Pat Vellner, I'm not sure... <laughs> I, I really like the guy, like, I used to watch all the documentaries with the, the songs on. I'll put a clip in if I can find one. He has been one of my favourite athletes on the male side, literally forever. But I was watching him on that bike and I don't understand what he's doing. Like, he basically looked like he needed to change up gear the whole time. His legs were going around really fast and the last time that happened i thought that was because the bike had broken but maybe he doesn't know how to use a bike properly and isn't familiar with like changing up gears and stuff when your feet are going so fast you can like push harder it would make it a lot easier for him maybe he just needs to spend more time on a bike and he'll stop ending up with like 36th place or whatever 
it did just seem very strange. I think Fakowski finished slightly higher than Velner, not a huge amount, but also not in the top of the pack. I'm not sure if you saw, but I really loved his little demonstration of the gymnastics event using like kids' toys. And he's a thinker, like they call him the professor, don't they? And they've always called him that. I really like that he's just super into the sort of mind games and the strategy and that side of things. He's a bit of a CrossFit nerd and I've got a spot, soft spot for nerds because I'm definitely one myself. <laughs> Right, let's go back in and figure out where I need to be for this press pass because I've only got 15 minutes until the heat that I want to film starts. Laura was leading from the start in this workout and I think the pig made a massive difference. She didn't seem to struggle with the pig at all, but a lot of the other athletes did. Katrin actually ended up quite behind. I think it was after the pig, but I only noticed that she was behind once we got to the gymnastics. She was significantly behind the field and taking like big breaks in between the gymnastics, which sucked to see actually. I really wanted her to do well in this workout. Laura and Annie started kind of leading the pack in this workout pretty early on and Annie tried to stick with Laura. Annie looked pretty comfortable on the wall balls and the gymnastics, but then when they got back to the pig, I think that's where she started to struggle a little bit more. Everybody else started to go onto the wall balls and catch up. Katrin, unfortunately, was still on the gymnastics for quite a long time, but then eventually joined them. She did just look a bit like sad, obviously, that she was a bit behind and like she was really exhausted. I think it was probably more the pig than anything though. And I think this pig was really heavy because a lot of athletes definitely struggled as soon as they got back to it. But Laura was not one of those people. She just pushed that thing the whole way. She barely took a break. I'm not even sure she did take a break. She just knew that she could do it and she just powered through right to the end. Annie, however, was a little bit later on and she ended up with like an eighth place finish in this workout. But she did well. She stayed with it in front of the pack. I think other heats just kind of caught up with her. Katrin unfortunately ended up with like 30, 34th place. She got time capped in this workout. Next up we have the men, so I was keeping an eye on BKG and Chandler Smith during this workout because those are the ones that we're rooting for this weekend. They are like the fan favourites, especially like BKG in Europe and I love Chandler Smith just because of his personality, he's so funny and just like an interesting character. BKG held his own in this workout, he, he wasn't like leading the pack but he stayed pretty far in front and Chandler Smith was kind of hanging in the same area as him and Chandler looked pretty strong throughout actually. The men seemed to struggle less with the pig. There were less people like struggling to flip it. And uh, the, the first few flips like on the way up the pitch that happened a lot faster than it did with the women. Spencer Panchek was leading this workout pretty much throughout. And in the end, BKG ended up with a ninth place and Chandler with a 15th. That's overall though, so in comparison to the other heats. In this particular heat, they ended up finishing quite high up. Next up we had the top heat with Fukowski, Patrick Valner, Roman Karenikov of course and Justin Medeiros was also in this heat. The, to begin with, the big flips 
seemed like no issue for any of these guys. They all got there pretty much around the same time, but Roman was looking the most recovered of all of them. It seemed like the pig was no issue. And he obviously was leading the pack quite early on. In this workout, the pig flips on the way back is really what made it. Patrick Vellner was hanging within the top few people for a lot of the workout, and I honestly thought that he was gonna speed up in the last pig flips and take a high finish. But it was actually Roman Karenikov, of course, for the first place, and then Brent Bukowski was the one we needed to keep an eye on because he ended up with a third overall, and he smashed it in this workout. Pat Vellner, although he hung with the top guys for quite a while, he ended up kind of falling back a little bit on the pig flips. I think that pig is just so heavy and after all the other work, it, you're just so drained. I'm not sure what's happening with Justin Medeiros here. I was really feeling for him. He was still on the gymnastics, like trying to chip away while everybody else had. Some people had finished and some people were still on the chipper and he was stuck on the Chester bar. And it seems really unlike him, but there wasn't anything that seemed like he had a significant injury. He just seemed like really out of breath and really like tired and exhausted. He was doing a lot of like bending over and waiting to flip the pig and he ended up getting time capped in this workout it seems very unlike him after seeing him struggle so much in this workout i was really rooting for him to finish higher placing than the other workouts I am completely exhausted and burnt out <laughs> and we've only had two events so far. In that one, Pat Valner did really well and kind of brought it back a little bit. He finished quite high up and he looked really strong towards the end. I think he paced himself in the first half of the workout and then pushed when he got to the pig. It was really cool to see Roman Karenikov do so well. Those kind of workouts are clearly in his favour. One thing that I was really, <laughs> again though, really shocked to see Justin Medeiros right at the back and he got time capped on that workout. Really shocked to see Justin Medeiros right at the back. He got time capped on that workout. Something must be wrong. There's nothing particularly out of the ordinary with that workout. It was a bit of a shock. Laura Horvath dominated that. She flipped it so many times so quickly and ran across the finish line. And Annie wasn't far behind her either. Katrin, however, though, she was quite behind. I'm not sure where she finished, but she was definitely behind on the toaster bar, on the stuff on the rig. She fell behind the pack pretty early on, which is interesting as she did so well on the bike one, but obviously she didn't compete at the CrossFit Games last year. We don't really know much about what her fitness level is like at the moment because we haven't seen her in many competitions recently. Right, I need to get indoors because it's so hot out here and you're just gonna have more of me complaining about how hot it is otherwise. I need to get some food. I've been told off by my partner. I have this thing where I like, obviously I've struggled with eating disorders, but I stop eating when I'm stressed and I basically haven't really eaten at all today and I need to go and get some food because otherwise I'm just gonna get more and more tired, more and more overwhelmed and it's just not gonna go well. So I'm gonna go and try and find some food. Though I don't really wanna queue up in those lines and the food isn't worth waiting for either so i'd rather get it from somewhere else but right now the priority is just to eat some food at all so i'm going to go and do that and get some water and then get in the coliseum and see what my press pass gets me in that i wasn't sure how i was going to feel about this test but honestly i absolutely loved it i feel like it worked out really well it was really interesting to watch especially the pullovers and I, it was so unexpected to see them kind of wrap out the pullovers in that way you'll see in a minute I will let you watch the rest of it, but Katrin, she did really well in this workout. She's very good at gymnastics. She was in one of the lower heats though, so she isn't like pushing to race against the other people like Danielle Brandon, of course. She won this workout, but it's cool to see how different athletes fared and Laura and Gabby didn't do as well in this workout, which 
it is sad but I feel like they can some of them can get a lower finish and still end up quite far at the top and not everybody can have a good workout and that is something that I'm really noticing having actually been here watching it because when you watch the live feed at home it focuses mainly on the people in the top of the heat and you don't know how your favorite athletes doing but actually a lot of our favorite athletes have workouts that aren't the best they have bad workouts all the time and actually you can still end up placing really high up the leaderboard even if you've had a couple of bad finishes
So you may wonder why Nick Matthew isn't wearing his crop tops this year, but apparently he's been told that he's not allowed to cut his shirts, which sucks. Like, we love the crop tops. Also, I have a bit of a strange input on these pullovers for the men. So my partner does, or has done calisthenics and kind of gym gymnastic style movements. While this workout was on, I was texting him and he sent me this message. He said it's easy to trap, quote, important parts on the bar. <laughs> and I can see that it would be. And if you actually look at how these men are doing it, they're kind of excessively lifting their hip crotch area over the bar more than the women were, which makes total sense. I can imagine that would be super painful. And my partner says it is super painful. So it's like an extra element that they have to deal with. So no wonder they would find it difficult. One thing about these though is really interesting. If you watch later on in the next heat, Patrick Vellner, because he's an ex-gymnast, oh my God, like his technique with those pullovers is insane.
so I basically had two options. I could have not filmed at the end of the day, which is what I normally do, and try and do the outro for the video and explain everything that happened in the last bit tomorrow. Or I can catch you up now in my current state and hope that you appreciate me being real with you and not trying to put on some sort of fake front where I'm like chirpy because I'm not. <laughs> the reality is I am so burnt out, I'm so tired, I've got bad sunburn, I'm exhausted and I've come back to the hotel. I've really not been looking after myself. <laughs> I have barely been eating over the last couple of days and my partner helped me admit that to myself today. I came back, steamed some veggies in the microwave because I've been craving vegetables so much and added it to my leftover pasta, ate that and put on the Barbie movie <laughs> on uh, some sort of online streaming service because I just needed a break. I've been basically non-stop working since I got here and I'm exhausted and I know this means that I'm not going to be able to get up a video by tonight but that's okay. The reality is at the CrossFit Games you're doing a lot, there's a lot going on, you're in the hot sun all day apart from obviously when it's in the Coliseum and for somebody that's neurodiverse like me being in the Coliseum is very very overwhelming, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of noise. It was great today to have a press pass. I actually chose to sit in the seats rather than go back into another press pit because that whole experience for me was very overwhelming. I appreciate the press pass so much. It's been so helpful and it's meant I've been able to get all of this content that I got today and I'm really happy with the shots that I've got. As I said earlier, I decided that I wasn't gonna focus on who is winning the events because as a fan of the sport myself, I'm more interested in like the underdog stories and the like fan favorites and what's happening with them and I know that that's not normally on the live stream because they tend to focus on who is top in the heat. The gymnastics medley was amazing to watch and I was actually really impressed with the test. I thought it was quite well thought out and there were some new movements introduced but it didn't feel really gimmicky or anything and there were clearly some athletes that were doing it really well like Annie, for instance, her cycle speed on the pullovers, that was amazing. And Daniel Brandon as well, obviously, she was uh, insane at that. And Annie followed not too long after her. Laura struggled a little bit and so did Gabby. They were clearly struggling on some of the handstand stuff and also on the pullovers. Obviously cut down to 30 athletes soon. And I was thinking about it and after some of the issues with Justin Medeiros, he must have quite a low finishing place and I do worry that he potentially could be near that cut line but obviously he pulled it back and won that last event which was amazing and his interview was so emotional and honestly I was teary listening to that it was it made me like him a lot more and I'm a sucker for stories and emotion and underdog stories and comebacks and that's what I like in sport and just in life generally I like to hear people being vulnerable the hurdles they're overcoming and their struggle I'm less interested in in people always winning all the time and I knew that that was why I was going to find this year so interesting in that last event Pat Vellner speaking of underdogs his pullovers were amazing you can clearly tell he's got that gymnastics background and he did really well but he did stumble a little bit on that the rotation on the block it's still quite a high finish in that workout which is really good Fukowski unfortunately got time capped he historically does quite well when there's like a swim run and we don't know whether there's going to be something like that this year watching the first individual event in the coliseum was so cool and especially when Justin took that win, like everybody was cheering for him. Any moment where anyone stumbled or fell, everyone was cheering. It was just such an amazing atmosphere. And I can't wait to see the lifts in that venue. I was just checking the leaderboard and of course Roman Karanikov is right at the top. I, I really like him and it made me quite emotional again, like watching him. He's just so like happy. He was so thrilled to have done so well in that workout. And of course he should. I don't know. It's just something about... The fact that he struggled to get a visa and struggled to get over here and then finally he's here and he's had his first year training fully in the US and it's clearly paying off and you can just see it written all over his face. It's just lovely. To add insult to injury, all of my batteries have now died. I have no batteries left to film on so the rest of it is going to be on my phone. The funny thing is like when... I obviously decided I didn't want to be in the press pit in the Coliseum, I wanted to be in a seat. They were trying to give me a seat based on the best viewing, but I had to 
also consider my anxiety and I, that meant I needed like an aisle seat. They didn't really care how much closer it was to the front but it did mean that I did get a few heads in the shot but at that point I was just feeling so anxious and overwhelmed especially like not knowing where I was gonna go like that all adds up and I feel like now I just need to look after myself <laughs> and stop being such a workaholic and have a little bit of rest so I hope you don't mind getting this video a little bit later than I intended. Last two have gone up super quickly because I obviously wanted to get decent masters and adaptive coverage because of the live stream. I'm really sorry I didn't manage to get any of that today. I just had to leave because I was so tired. Maybe one day where I can hire a couple of other camera people, like everybody else has teams here. There aren't many content creators that are doing it that just have themselves doing all the videoing and editing etc maybe one day i'll be able to hire a couple of other people to help me cover the masters and the adapted division so that we can make coverage really inclusive that would make me happy but for now you're just gonna have to live with having a anxious slightly defective overwhelmed human attempting to get as much footage as i can <laughs> and burning myself out in the process so thank you for all of the support i've been really overwhelmed with all the support it's been so lovely and i'm glad that you're enjoying the content <laughs> i'm sorry that i am so so exhausted right now and that this end of the video is not what i intended i hope despite that that you enjoyed the video i'll add the playlist here so that you can watch any of the others thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye